to the Matt O'Grady Coaching Podcast, mattogradycoaching.com. What is up, party people? Thanks for listening in. Thanks for coming to this discussion of awareness and mindfulness. I thought it's pretty interesting because I was having a conversation with a coaching client this week and the question came up, what's the difference between awareness and mindfulness? And it was really interesting because I I didn't know the answer. In my mind, they're so interrelated. Uh, I think um, mindfulness for me, I've always thought of it um, for some reason so much more about the physical. So in the sense of being mindful when washing the dishes or in the shower or, you know, doing something physically. Uh, Even I practice being mindful as I'm typing on the keyboard because I work on the computer so much. Uh, So it's one of those uh, experiences where uh, without any specific reason, I kind of took mindfulness and and put it into the physical like when I go on a meditative walk I am being mindful as I walk and my body moves I'm being mindful of my thoughts and my feelings too but for some reason it's really stuck with me on um, the physical aspect of life However, for a lot of people, that's not true. Mindfulness has a broader definition, which I'll get into in a second. And awareness for me has always been this um, practice where I'm being aware of my mind. (laughs) Mindfulness. And for me, the definition of awareness is being uh, aware of the mind. So it's interesting, all this jargon. Um, But for me personally, that's where awareness, not that I'm not also aware of my physical apparatus of the body. Yes, I am when I'm being aware. But when I'm practicing awareness, I am more specifically focusing on what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. This inner state of awareness. So for me, that's that's what the definitions uh, really have meant. And then I went to the dictionaries uh, here on the wonderful internet. And uh, I want to read these to you because I thought they were interesting. So I'm going to read to you the mindfulness definition in Merriam-Webster is... The practice of maintaining a non-judgmental state of heightened or complete awareness of one's thoughts, emotions, or experiences on a moment-to-moment basis. It's pretty awesome. It's a great definition of mindfulness, much more comprehensive than the way that I was really kind of placing it in most cases. Um, So I guess what I really practice on a day-to-day basis is mindfulness and awareness. And um, they're so related. When I really think about it, I question, is there a difference? Well, let's listen to... um, This is uh, the freedictionary.com version, uh, and I liked this definition of being aware. Having knowledge or discernment of something, attentive and well-informed. And then underneath it says archaic, vigilant, and watchful. So this is more akin to the way that I've been thinking about awareness, this watchfulness, this vigilance, this ability to discern thoughts and feelings, to really have clarity around my inner life. So I think there's no right or wrong here. I think it really comes down to just how you approach the definition, what fits best for you and and how you like to think about it. Uh, 
I like to be mindful physically, and I like to practice a state of awareness, this vig vigilance, this uh, attentive and well-informed. You know, it's pretty interesting because that's really what you're doing. You're, you're being informed about your moment-to-moment -moment now life experience. You're really stepping back, relaxing as much as you can, letting go, and just letting this awareness, if you stay out of your thoughts, I mean, you're going to have thoughts, you're going to have feelings, you're going to have, you're going to itch, and all of a sudden you're going to have to blow your nose or whatever, go to the bathroom. I mean, it's so funny. The ego really tries to pull us in all sorts of directions. Um, I know most of you who listen to this channel are regular meditators, but don't you remember when you first started meditating and you'd sit down and close your eyes and try to start focusing on your breathing or experimenting with a new mantra or whatever, and you wanted to do literally anything but that. And that is the mind, that is the ego, that is the, the patterns of the mind saying, Hey, whoa, what the heck is this? We've been going on this other pattern for decades. What are you trying to do here? <laughs> and that's the best part about an awareness practice, a mindfulness practice, is you now reserve the right to be able to make decisions based on being informed by watching these thoughts. How do you feel about these thoughts? What do you think of your feelings? How do your emotions feel? What is your moment-to-moment -moment life experience? It could be anything. There's no judgment. There's no right or wrong. But what is it? You know, really knowing the contents of your mind and your heart and your life. Instead of always, you know, being so focused on where you're going or where you've been, you start to just live in this now place where you can be aware, you can be mindful, you can be present. You're really experiencing it, savoring it. And that's what I love to do. So regardless of the definition, <laughs> that's the practice that I really believe in. This, no matter what's going on, whether you're working or you're by yourself or you're in relationship with someone or you're praying or you're meditating, regardless of what the kind of external aspect is of what you're doing. There's this internal aspect of watching everything. Stepping back as much as you can. I mean, if you're out in relationship with people, you're at work, or, you know, you're not going to say to someone, oh, I'm stepping back, I'm watching everything. You just do this internally. You don't need to tell anyone what you're doing. And you just experience it. What happens when you step back, your personality steps back, your ego, you kind of make your ego take a quick time out. And it'll still think and talk and, you know, there's always this self-talk going on. It's so funny, I had a coaching client uh, just a few weeks ago say, what are you talking about? I'm not talking in my mind all the time. I'm like, of course you are. <laughs> of course you are. Yes, you are. And we had this a little debate. It was like 30 seconds. I wasn't going to argue. I'm just like, well, I think as you, you know, continue your practices, uh, you know, you might notice something. You tell me. <laughs> Not even two weeks later, they're like, really? <laughs> I said, yeah, I, I figured you would... She's like, I'm always talking to myself. I'm like, yeah, you, me, and the rest of us. It's always happening. It's just a. Uh, sometimes the voice is more subtle. And we also think of it as, well, oh, I'm just thinking about something. But if you step back far enough and you really practice this deep state of watching, of awareness, 
and you're mindful of what you see, you'll notice that there's almost always incessant, non-stop talking in your own mind. And it's okay. It's just part of how most of us were made. And if you consistently step back and consistently watch what's going on here and you, without judgment, right? Like the definition in mindfulness, a moment-to-moment -moment awareness, just watching to learn what's really going through you. Because that's really who you are in those moments. And being aware of it is tremendous because then you can make informed decisions about what you would like it to be. You don't have to make a decision the first time, second time, even the 50th time. But eventually, you may see some things that you feel you want to make some conscious changes with. And it's not, you're not shooting from the hip here. You're really contemplating what are the best choices for your life ongoing, you know, and make some real deep inner decisions about how you want to live. Uh, I've been living intentionally for 20 years or so, um, and it's not that I have a perfect life or I've done everything perfect or I'm a saint, because I haven't, and I'm not a saint, <laughs> but what I am is someone who learned to practice several really core main practices that I've talked with you guys about on this podcast for seven years. And an awareness practice is one of those. Meditation, of course, I've talked with you about hundreds of times about my gratitude and appreciation practice. And this idea of present moment living, you know, being aware of the present moment and living in it, from it, from that space, not from the past, not from inspirations or, or anxiety about the future, just aiming to be completely free and watch and see and then contemplate and then make these conscious decisions about important choices for your life. Because, for example, if you notice that uh, that self-talk that you're complaining, for example. <laughs> not that you would ever complain. You know, I'm talking about everybody else, not me and you, because, of course, we would never complain, right? And even, even though many of us don't complain outwardly, the truth is that most of us complain quite a bit inwardly, and some of us do both. <laughs> God knows I've been guilty of that one. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where when you really start to see it, and you step back and you watch it, and you see it happening, you realize that it's really, um, it's not necessary. Complaining is not necessary. It's an indulgence into an emotion of unnecessary BS. It really is. And we all do it. It doesn't mean we're going to stop, but that's the truth of complaining, isn't it? And people say, I've got to vent, I've got to express myself, uh, you know, all this other stuff. Well, uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure, but okay. Um, I know when you are unaware, you feel like you have to vent. But if you're really aware of something, you almost never feel a real urge to follow through on it. It's kind of completely different where you're in this deep awareness. You're ready to just kind of follow through on the momentum of where some of these urges take you. But you realize that you have something in that moment that you don't always have available. And that's choice. You can, in that moment, choose to follow through on that urge, or you can choose not to. 
And I think the real magic happens when we're watching for some time, not the first time necessarily, but really watching this urge to do something like complain about a person or a situation. And then in the moment, gently, just choosing not to follow that momentum and to redirect the energy and attention of the mind back onto awareness, present moment living, love, joy, a good time, anything else. Because a lot of times we're feeling relatively neutral, but oh, this urge to complain about that we think of, we get remind what somebody said to us or what we didn't like or, you know, we got this email or text or, you know, all this stuff, right? Just stuff. Somebody didn't say something we liked. Okay. So now we now we're mad at them or annoyed by them or frustrated or we can't believe they would ever, you know, whatever. But instead of just kind of going down the egoic pattern of judgment and criticism of others and ourselves, instead we can pull that energy back and choose a different path. One that just simply watches, is just aware and mindful of what's going on inside us. And then if you're so inspired, which I highly recommend you explore and play around with and, and investigate, do your own research into this. See if it works or not. Don't just take my word for it. You know, get into your mind and, and see what's really going on there. See if you like the patterns that are moving through you all day long. That are affecting your life, your attitudes, your moods, your energy, your love life, your relationships, your job. Well, guess what? If you don't like anything about your life, you can change it. No doubt about it. However, without awareness, without mindfulness, without present moment living, it's like trying to swim upstream. You know, it really is. You try to make all these changes to your life and be different and be better and what have you and just use your will with your ego cracking the whip the whole way. You're not good enough. You're not worth it, you're ugly, you're whatever. And instead, you can let all that judgment go of yourself and others. See if there's another path, the path of awareness, the path of mindfulness. And I really see them as twin brothers, twin sisters, practices that have different words but are so interrelated and both so important. So I hope you practice both <laughs> and whatever your definitions of them are. Thanks for listening, everybody. Matagritycoaching.com.